Hello everybody and welcome back to Sims History. Today we're going to play with three, four, four Sims from Louis XIV's court. And in fact what we're going to do is take his mom, Anne of Austria, his brother, Philippe, and uh, the gentleman who became his first minister and who was Anne of Austria's first minister uh, for many years, uh, Jules Mazarin, otherwise Karl Mazarin, for a trip into the, uh, into the gardens. And uh, this lovely uh, little area that I have here is actually made up of a bunch of gardens uploaded to the gallery. It's my attempt to recreate Versailles gardens, but uh, with, uh, without having very much talent of my own, I have borrowed the work of others. And the uh, uh, custom content from those galleries, actually, I don't think any of these actually use custom content, but the actual gardens themselves, I will... Uh, give you the names of and the names of their creators. Uh, today's trip is actually just to give everybody a little bit of a chance to get to know each other, uh, to see how they interact when they've got a little bit of time to spend um, hanging out. And apparently the first thing they're going to do is just run around. Oh, that's right, there's a pool. I forgot about that. So anyway, uh, in the sneak preview, you all got to meet Anne of Austria a little while ago. Uh, so here she is uh, in a little bit more of the flesh. As you can see coming up here, her personality. I've made her good uh, because she was pretty pious and she tried to raise her children to be good, to, uh, to be pious and religious and to do uh, right by other people. She was famously quite active. She was an accomplished horsewoman and she raised both of her sons to be very active. I made her self-assured, which is something actually I do with pretty much all the royals because they have, uh, a rec you know, they have to spend so much time at court with people and telling people what to do that that's almost a necessary characteristic for survival. And I made her domestic because she does seem to have centered her life on her uh, children and actually she seems to have continued to care very much about the politics of her home country even after she was a princess. Anne was born in Spain, uh, even though her name is Anne of Austria, and she was uh, the daughter of a Spanish king and of an Austrian um, uh, princess hence her name, Anne of Austria. She married Louis XIII, Louis XIV's father, when she was actually 11. And they started pushing, the courts started pushing for her and Louis XIII to start uh, having relations by the time they were 14. In fact, uh, she and Louis didn't get along all that well. Louis, didn't, Louis XIII didn't seem to like her very much after the first couple of years of their marriage. Um, she had a several miscarriages, and she did not actually have a child who lived um, till she was uh, 37 years old, so she's much, much older than Louis. And we have little Louis right here. I, I have him as a child, uh, so he doesn't have a whole lot of personality built yet, but I have made him a music lover, and he has the aspiration of uh, being uh, active, that is, the rambunctious scamp. This is his brother, Philippe, who was apparently, I don't know where he's sleeping, okay. Uh, Philippe here, uh, who I'm also having as a child. Oh, I guess that's right, he's got homework, but he doesn't need to do it because our Sims, uh, I have that cheat in there. Uh, Philippe is also active. Um, Philippe apparently was uh, one of the better dancers at court. He was actually quite famous as a dancer, even more famous as a dancer than his brother. Uh, and uh, Louis really loved to dance, uh, although we don't see a whole ton of that in this particular epi episode because the Sims don't have dancing installed yet. Now, Jules Bizarron here, was a cardinal. Um, he is about the same age of, as Anne of Austria, and they worked together to run France during um, Louis XIV's uh, regency period. He, was, he became king when he was four, so obviously somebody had to take care of him. And his mom uh, did not uh, uh, try to run France without any help. Um, Mazarin was actually the protege of Cardinal Richelieu, who is the evil cardinal in all the Three Musketeers episodes. But uh, his main policy 
as uh, prime minister was actually to try to keep the peace between France and Spain and actually to keep all the countries that were Catholic working together. Uh, so, you know, his foreign policy was not actually particularly evil, and he does seem to have done a good job by Louis XIV, uh, who, you know, ended up being a perfectly competent and uh, intelligent king when, he, when it came time for him to run. And so what else do you want from a regent besides a relatively just, you know, attempt for a relatively just society to keep the peace and raise the king to be uh, intelligent? Now, Mazarin is kind of an, a kind of an interesting guy on a, in and of his own. He was a knight as a young man. You know, he's from a, he's from an aristocratic family, and he was quite fascinated with politics and with other aristocratic families from a very young age. But when he was uh, in his early 30s, he had a mystical experience that caused him to um, become much more serious about his church going and to go into uh, a career in the church. Um, he was uh, also a very active guy. Uh, and he, despite the fact that he looks pretty mousy in all of his, um, in all of the uh, portraits that were made of him, he was, um, really quite astonishingly brave. He first became famous in European history when he rode out on his own initiative into the middle of a battle, um, in the middle of a battlefield, yelling, peace, peace, and convinced the two armies that actually peace had been declared and prevented a battle. So this is a ballsy guy. Uh, he is... Uh, and, and ambitious. So anyway, the characteristics that I gave him were that he was good, because I do think that he actually has a very strong, good uh, impulses. You know, um, he's active, he's self-assured, and he's a quick learner, and that's pretty clear. He learned, he studied an awful lot uh, as he was... Um, Going up, and then of course I've made him a Renaissance sim by ambition because he did have so many interests. Oh, and I forgot to give you Anne of Austria. Her goal I've made her to, as somebody who wants to create a successful lineage. Uh, Louis, right? The, as you see, he's the rambunctious scamp right now, and the Philippe is actually more of the social butterfly. So let's see what else of, we can find in this lovely little garden. Maybe Anne would like to take a walk through it. Or perhaps not. But let's just see what happens when they go on a walk together. Look how beautiful these gardens are that these people have made. I'm going to really enjoy having Louis and his family wandering through here and his court. I mean, look how beautiful it is over here. Now, as it happens, uh, there was quite a lot of speculation that uh, Bazarin and uh, uh, Anne of Austria were lovers. But I actually, before I ran this section, I played them for days in a little cottage all alone together, and they never once engaged in even one romantic activity. Uh, they don't actually seem to be very interested in each other. Well, I can see that what all these, and I guess this is what I should have expected, all these very uh, uh, active sims really want to do, uh, uh, have fun hanging out. And I can see I'm going to have to, I can see here I'm going to have to actually install toilets in the gardens, which I didn't think to do in the original version of this, since poor Louis is really suffering here. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it will be, no, Louis, you're not going to go, you're not going to go to the, uh, to school because there is no school to go to. You're going to be privately tutored. That's what we do here in The Sims. Let's just create a tiny bathroom for these guys. Uh, just for now, and I, I apologize to the creators of these beautiful garden rooms for creating a uh, uh, for creating a uh, 
ridiculous looking styled room. Uh, I'll have it out of there and put something in that's much more delightful and much more pleasant um, for them all. Uh, a little, much, much more appropriate later on. But this one seems pretty good. This will at least give them all the things that they need in a relatively small area. Yes, come on. Buy a room. All right. Come on. You can do it. Oh, I'm going to have to... Oh, that's right. This is... I can't put this down here because this is a community lot. That's so annoying. Maybe I can... Oh, no, I can't put it down in this part of the community lot. Okay. So let's see if there's another part of the community lot where it can fit. That is not outside of the lot. Oh, dear. This is a problem. Maybe there's a teeny tiny bathroom that I can use. There's a tiny one. Let's buy that room. Oh, yes, that's good. We can, we can play with that one. And they'll put a tiny door there so that the family can get in. Oh, that's good. Let's see if there's another part of the community lot. I do seem to constantly be uh, trying to fix these videos. Yes, Louie, we've created a toilet. You can go use it now. Run, 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 be free. Okay, and maybe we need to put in uh, some grills so that they can eat. I didn't think about that either. The park really isn't very much fun if you're going to starve while you're there. Of course, in real life, Louis would have a bunch of people whose job it was to do nothing but cook for him. Well, of course, if you're the royal family, you're going to have the best grills, right? So let's give them the highest quality one to work with here. There you go. And Jules, I think your family that you're supposed to be taking care of really is starving. So perhaps you better make some food for them. Yes, I know you're feeling playful, but that's just... Yes, poor little Philippe is starving. And what's going on with Louis? Poor little Louis has to pee super bad. Come on, you can do it. Why can't you go there? And let your son use the toilet. Yes. It can be your turn later. Let's see what they're all gonna do now that they've got some time. And let's see what little Louie does. Uh, you know, I've given him, I've had so, you give them so little personality as kids that it's hard to see what they're gonna do. Well, apparently they run off into the woods where you can't even see them. Come on, show me what you're doing. Aw, oh, there he is. He's taking an, oh, he's taking a nap. Well, that's cute. What's what's Philippe doing? Hanging out and eating. That's good. And Anne, what is she doing? Oh, she's also going to sit down and possibly... Oh, she's going to take a nap. Okay. Well, I hope that you are enjoying this little video. I hope that you enjoyed meeting our little royal family. There is going to be more members of Louis's court to introduce, and of course uh, we'll want Louis to have a chance to grow up. But I think now it's time for the royal family to head home, uh, back to the little cottage that I'm keeping them in. Um, Louis and Philippe and Anne and Jules actually spent a significant a portion of time, years and years, living in actual poverty while they were fleeing from uh, the, uh, the Civil War in France. There was a whole group of people who, uh, um, well, there was a, there was a uh, rebellion against Jules and against um, Anne, uh, claiming that they were terrible foreigners and bad for the country. And during that rebellion, which lasted a number of years, uh, they had, uh, they were living in hiding and in poverty, something which, by the way, Louis would never forget once he was an adult.